Hi everyone. So today we are with Frank Kane from Marine Institute and he's going to talk to us about the Impact Project, I-M-P-A-Q-T, which is all about eco-intensification of aquaculture production systems. So Frank, would you mind introduce, introducing yourself and your organisation, please? Hi, George. Um, my name is Frank Kane and I'm a team leader here in the aquaculture section in the Marine Institute. We are involved in work regarding scientific research and monitoring for the Irish state and providing advice for the regulators. Um, currently, one of our key areas of work is IMTA or IMTA, as is known as our integrated multi-trophic aquaculture. And we're looking at how that might work in a, particularly in an Irish and a European situation. And I'm currently coordinating the IMPACT project, which is a project related to IMTA. Okay. And can you tell us a little bit about the innovation, please? Perfect. Okay. So the IMPACT project, it's an interesting project and it brings together two fairly diverse um, disciplines. We have the biologists who are aquaculture farmers, growing species and technologies, and then we have the technologists who are the IT people and bringing together the technology and the learning, the computer learning. The main ob objective of IMPACT is to develop and test a multifunctional management platform for IMTA production, with the aim to use the data in this to gather, gather the data and to demonstrate the viability of IMTA as, a, as an aquaculture approach. So when we talk about multifunctional platform, we sort of mean that it monitors, it models, it analyzes and provides feedback and decisions from the information that it has. The, the outputs will be in a, a dashboard format and they'll be suitable for most IMTA, produ IMTA producers and to deal with the different IMTA scenarios. So where we currently are with the project is we're in the designing and testing phase of the monitoring and management technologies and the collecting in the data phase will from the different impact pilots. There are a number of technologies being tested at the impact pilots. These include novel sensors. So we have technologists developing new nitrite and phosphate sensors to work in seawater and work continuously in the field, as well as miniaturized sensors that attach to organisms. We're particularly working on seaweed at the moment to measure the currents and forces they the frond experiences in the waves, as well as the depth and light that it's working at. Then we're working on that communication and data collection tools, which within the project are called IADAS and DAS. And these gather the information, gather the information from the different sensors wirelessly and wired. So they're capable of communicating with quite a broad range of sensors using different formats, such as Wi-Fi, um, LoRa, different way, VHF kind of stuff, bringing them all together. And these are supported then by an intelligent energy management system, which optimizes the energy available on the site. So it turns sensors on and off, turns data aggregators on and off as needed to make the maximum use of your solar or wind energy you have on the site. All this data is, is processed and gathered into the cloud. And within the cloud, we have the intelligent management system or the IMS. The IMS gives information uh, on the, your current stocks, your stocks of seaweed, your shellfish and your fish. And it also reports back on the environmental information collected from the sensors. It combines it with information from other sources such as satellite data and chlorophyll, weather information, information, um, information from image analysis and cameras, Exter and other external data sources and websites. Um, it also allows the operator to input information on their feed, their stock health, and their welfare. Then within the IMS, there is an added artificial intelligence, which gives warnings and alarms and feedback generally like that. But it also gives feedback on the welfare of the stock, feedback on the ecological footprint of the, the farm that's ongoing, and it makes recommendations about feeding, production, harvesting and your general stock management and site operations. Um, then also with the data that's collected, we are looking to demonstrate the sustainability of IMTA. So some of our colleagues are working on socioeconomic benefits of IMTA. 
um, where are the benefits and who benefits from them. They're looking at how IMTA contributes to the ecosystem services and, and how it, it facilitates the movement from the linear model to the circular economy, so from monoculture to multi-trophic polyculture. Then we're also looking at the, um, the, yeah, the socioeconomic benefits, and these are useful tools really to progress IMTA when, when, when people start to do it, how, how can we do it well? All these are working in cooperation with a number of pilot sites across Europe. Um, here in the main institute, we're working with the Lahana Pool Agriculture Research Site out in Connemara, where we're looking at what potential species might suit the Irish IMTA setup. And we're looking at a number of species, scallops, lobsters, fish, and different seaweeds. Um, we're also working with the amazing guys up in Keywater Fisheries in Sligo, who are pioneering IMTA in a freshwater environment. And they're looking at how duckweed might be used to clean perch water and to minimize the impact and have a useful co-product. We're also working with the guys in Sands in Scotland and North Sea Farms in the Netherlands who are looking at how seaweed, oysters and mussels might work in an IMPA setup. We're working with our industrial partners in Turkey called Chamli, who are an industrial sea bass farm and they're adding to their site, they're adding mussels and uh, different seaweeds, mainly ulva, to see how an IMTA site might work on their, on their industrial scale, and they're using the I intelligent management system to operate their site. On board, we also have the Yellow Sea Fisheries in China, who have vast experience in IMTA, working in Sangao Bay, which has a massive seaweed farm within the bay in conjunction with other extracted species and fish. On top of that, the pilots are looking at the, the techniques for IMTA and how we might farm, what, what methods can be used and how it might be done. We're also, building, the, the project also in conjunction with Deltares in the Netherlands are working on IM, an IMTA model, which would help quantify the impact and ecosystem services of IMTA and be quite useful for both the regulators and the farmers in the end. And to bring it all together, we're putting together some an online course um, on IMTA relating to much of the outputs of the project and how it might be done. So that's a, an online course that will be available to everybody. It'll be coming out towards the end of the year. So that's the, the bulk of the innovation within the project. Great, so it's clearly very extensive. Um, but I just wonder if you could summarize why this is of interest to Irish aquaculture producers. Why is it of interest to Irish aquaculture producers? Um, I would say the EMI's role in, particularly the research role within the EMI is to be asking what does the industry need in the future? And our research should be going towards that. Um, recently, the, the EU published this new strategy called the, the, the Green, what's it called? European Green Deal. Deal. European yeah. Green Deal. And within that, one of the aims of it is economic growth should be de decoupled from resource use. There also aquaculture along with most other industries, there's this move towards reducing impact towards the circular economy. Um, we need to be able to close the nutrient loop and lessen impact. These requirements will affect aquaculture and I do think that IMDA is going to be one of the key future tools we have to help achieve this. Ireland so far has led the way with organic, with organic um, farming. The, the rest of the industry are beginning to catch up, so maybe Ireland has an opportunity to lead the way again with with this with IMTA. Our current government are putting a, a new um, a new emphasis on going offshore, offshore winds, which again provides an opportunity for farming in different environments, going offshore, and IMTA seaweed farming combined with that. But IMTA itself, the model we know of IMTA would be. Um, salmon cages with mussels or moisters beside them and seaweed. And that's a fairly simple model of how IMTA works with one benefiting from the other. But Terry Chopin describes IMTA as a concept and he thinks that actually we should be thinking of it on a bay area or, or a much bigger, broader concept and how the nutrient cycle works within that. So I think that's something that we have an opportunity to do in Ireland here. We could consider how that might work. We could possibly look at Mulroy, Bantry, Hillary, how are the 
shellfish species benefiting from the, the farm species within that bay already? And can we manage on the bay level from an IMTA, IMTA concept? Um, so we have to ask, that are, are the scallop farmers in Mulroy Bay benefiting from the salmon farm? Could a co-op um, restock juvenile lobsters based on them growing on a salmon farm site? Can we use seaweed to reduce the impact of the farm? So the, the question was, um, yeah, so the key interest is the project should be able to demonstrate the sustainability of the IMTA, the so socioeconomic benefits, the ecosystem services, and make it a useful tool. And along with that, the IMTA model can be a useful um, regulatory tool for the regulators to make decisions regarding IMTA. IMTA. Okay, so uh, just to kind of summarize, so the experience of going through the project will help you identify the potential of IMTA, but you will also create this management tool that can be used by others. Pretty much. Okay, so um, how would that compare to other solutions? There are, there are management tools out there already, but there are none that I know of, or very few anyway, that are involved with the IMTA exclusively, and that's probably the niche innovation within our impact system, in that it, it considers not only the fed fish, but it considers the, the bivalve species, the middle trophic layer, and the, the plant trophic layers within its reporting back. Um, the other n innovative bits are we have now, within the project, we've developed novel indices based on the data the IMF has to report back on the welfare of your stock, to report back on the ecological footprint of the activity that's going on. And thirdly, technology-wise, we have designed to be able to design the sensors to be able to take data from a number of different data sources. Um, using multiple different technologies, so it's quite flexible at being able to operate with a number of different sensors to bring all this data together. Okay, um, just quickly, you mentioned these indicators <coughs> that indicate stock health. Does that cover all of the species you've already mentioned then? It does. Within the, the IMF, we have done, we, we have, we're working with the guys in France, Oregon, doing a, an app and you can basically report the, the, some number of parameters, like my fish are feeding poorly today, my fish are swimming differently, these kind of little things. And the IMS takes all those, that, all, all those together and sort of quantifies them. The one individual report probably doesn't carry a lot of weight, but mm -hmm. if you have that over a number of times or from a number of different operators, these will feed into an index that will actually tell you that you know, maybe you should be keeping an eye on your fish, that the stress levels are off or something like that. Okay, so those great. Are the kind of models we're working on. Okay, so what's next? What's next with the project and this technology? Okay, well, at the minute we're right in the middle of it. There's about a year, nearly a year left within the project. We're at the stage where um, things are beginning to come together, results are beginning to come in. We have to continue to integrate all the different data sources, put, continue to put the intelligent, intelligence in the intelligent management system test it out, see how intelligent it really is, um, do a bit of testing with the operator. So that's all ongoing. So we're developing it, developing it, and it's in the beta phase and we'll continue to ongo to develop it. Um, towards the end of the year, that should be coming together and we have to, our SME partners will be looking at how they can develop it and commercialize it and where the product might go from there. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out. We're also working on the online course on IMTA to bring a lot of the research within the impact project to, to the end user through a, an online course. So we'll keep an eye out, on that, out for that. So all this will be available on our sort of social media sites when things are becoming available. Okay, so the online course that you just mentioned, is that expected to happen this year or next year? This year. We hope towards the end of the year to release this. Excellent, okay. Um, so how do people find out more? Um, they can go to the impactproject.eu website or just Google Impact Project, Impact with a Q, or we're also on Twitter and LinkedIn, or you can just get in touch with me if you want, frank.gain at marine.ie. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you very much indeed for your time. Okay. Thank you very much, Georgia. It was really good. Thank you. Excellent. Take care. Bye. All right.